Good morning, everyone. We'll call the August 3rd, 2010 meeting of the Jackson City Council to order. And we'll ask uh, Councilman Maurice, Maurice Hayes to lead us in invocation and pledge. If you would, please rise. Join me in prayer. Father, we pause at the beginning of a new day just to give you praise and thanksgiving for our health and strength and life and for a new day. We want to thank you today for our nation of freedom, and we pray for our nation as you and your word have called us. We pray for our national leaders, our state leaders, even our local leaders. We pray for uh, wisdom and guidance for our mayor and for this council, for our uh, city workers and leaders and all that they do and the responsibilities that we have been given uh, to better the lives of those people that we have been elected and we serve. We give you praise today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Need on the roll call. I think you can show all council members present. Uh, council received a copy of the minutes of July 6, 2010 meeting. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? If not, uh, we'll just accept those minutes uh, submitted to you all. We have uh, a couple of proclamations this morning and some special recognition, so let me go down to the podium. Let me ask uh, Randy Zell, who is a member of the staff of the Jackson Recreation Parks Department, if she would, to come on up. And then also, uh, Ms. Kenya Inslee and her family, and she has a couple of teachers here, and I'll tell you a little bit about both of these in just a second. Let me ask that any of the family members of okay. Kenya and the teachers come on up and join us. This special recognition of Kenya Inslee, right here, Randy Zell for representing Jackson, and the 2010 USA Special Olympic Games recently held in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, Ms. Inslee competed on the Tennessee Special Olympics track and field team, running in four events. She came home to Jackson with a medal in three events, two silver and the gold medal in the 400-meter dash. Her performance brings honor to Jackson and all the Tennessee Special Olympics. But I'd also like to recognize one of our staff members of the Parks and Recreation Department, Randy Zell, the Jackson Recreation Parks Department and Area Director of the Tennessee Special Olympics. Mrs. Zell was track and field coach for Tennessee at the National Games and also runs the Special Olympics games and programs throughout the year for Jackson seven counties in West Tennessee. We'd like to take this opportunity to recognize her for dedication and the special needs program of our community in West Tennessee. And Randy, I have for you, which I didn't know if you were, knew you were gonna get this or not. So Mayor's Commendation is hereby presented to Randy Zell in recognition of her outstanding achievements <clears throat> as a track and field coach for Tennessee at the National Special Olympics Games and for a dedicated service to the special needs population in our community. The city of Jackson and signed on 7 2017. Randy, thank you for everything you do. Thank you for your heart and coordinating the program. Few people, very few people have a, a day named in their honor, but we have one today. And this is a proclamation whereas Special Olympics provides training and athletic competition for special needs children and adults, giving them the opportunity to develop physical fitness, uh, demonstrate courage, experience joy, and personal achievement. And whereas Special Olympics athletes share their gifts skills and friendship with their families, 
other Special Olympic athletes and their community. And whereas Kenya Inslee recently represented Jackson and Madison County in track and field competitions at the U.S. Special Olympics National Games in Lincoln, Nebraska, and whereas Ms. Inslee brought recognition and honor to her community by winning two silver medals and a gold medal in her events. Now, therefore, we, Jerry Gist, Mayor of the City of Jackson, Tennessee, and Jimmy Harris, Mayor of Madison County, Tennessee, do hereby proclaim August 3rd, 2010, as Kenya Inslee Day in Jackson, Madison County, Tennessee, and urge all citizens to recognize the outstanding individual for the honors she has bestowed on our community. Kenya, it's an honor for me to present you this proclamation. <laughs> I'd also like to, to thank, obviously, her parents and the teachers who work with her, nurture her and love her every day of her life, and, and she was a, a, a tremendous uh, ambassador for a city and demonstrated all those great athletic abilities that you have. So thank you uh, for, for what you did for us and how you honored our city at, these, at this national game. Randy, anything you want to say? And I think uh, Tony Black has a special presentation that he'd like to make to both these individuals. So Tony, won't you come on up? <laughs> Thank you, Mayor and Council. Let me say, uh, every year uh, we do a state games in Nashville at Vanderbilt. And I make it a point to uh, go up because there's a special place in my heart for the Special Needs Olympics and, and, and the kids that participate. And Kenya was a little sick that morning. But she, so she can run. She can run. Her brother back here, he likes to talk a little stuff all the time. <laughs> but we really, really are proud of her and her parents and her teachers and everyone that works with her. And one of the things that she has done that I have never had the opportunity, probably many of you would never have the opportunity to do her and Randy, there's a program that the Special Olympics has. It's called the Airlift. There's 180 corporate companies that send their corporate jets to pick up the athletes. And her corporate jet was General Mills, am I correct? Yeah. So I've never had the opportunity to ride on a corporate jet. <laughs> may never get the opportunity to ride on a corporate jet. But we, we're, we're so appreciative. And Kenya, in recognition of your accomplishments, I have a plaque that I'd like to present to you and read to you. It says, presented to Kenya Easley in recognition of your performance in the 2010 National Special Olympics game, presented by the city of Jackson and the Jackson Recreation Park Department. August the 3rd, 2010. So this is yours, baby. <laughs> she didn't know anything about this, but this is not uh, Randy's job. And I get very emotional about it because it's very near to me. Uh, this is her ministry. Um, she works year-round with the Special Olympics. Not only do she do the uh, area-wide games, but she also does there's bowling that takes place, there's basketball, and she has to work and coordinate with the schools and the various teachers, not only in Madison County, but in the entire area. And so on behalf of the Recreation and Parks Department, Randy, we'd like to present this to you and present it to Randy Zell in recognition for your outstanding commitment to the special need athletes participating in the Tennessee Special Olympics Area 11, presented by the City of Jackson and the Jackson Recreation Parks Department. August 3rd, 2010. You, uh, you want to make a speech? <laughs> no, no speech? <laughs> she has presented me a, a ball cap, which is really going to come in handy this evening, guys, oh. about 6 o'clock. Um, 2010, um, USA National. Uh, Special Olympics Games. And then, I guess all states are represented at those games. And she happened to find one of the pins, I don't know if I should tell you this or not, <laughs> that uh, the people from Alabama brought to Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> she put that pin on the hat, so thank you. So much.
As you all know, uh, this evening is a very special evening for this city, and we have our national night out. And sort of Byron Taylor is here, and we have some representatives of the Jackson Police Department here, and, and I know they're going to be all over this city tonight. And um, it's a special night for us. It's where neighbors get to know neighbors. Uh, we have some really great food, and um, it's just a special time. The one time a year that we can get together and, and do this, and, and Sergeant Taylor and all of his staff, the entire police department's worked hard on this. Uh, they're going to try to get to all of them. We have the fire department be out. There will be a lot of them. And I know, I know the city council members will be out and trying to make as many as they can. So, in honor of this evening, I do have a proclamation which I'd like to present to Sergeant Taylor, and then he can tell us about uh, about the plans for this evening. <clears throat> it's a proclamation, whereas. The National Association of Town Watch and Target are sponsoring a unique nationwide crime, drug, and violence prevention program on August the 3rd, 2010, entitled National Night Out. And whereas the 27th Annual National Night Out provides a unique opportunity for the city of Jackson to join forces with thousands of other communities across the country in promoting cooperative police community crime prevention efforts and whereas the city of Jackson plays a vital role in assisting the Jackson Police Department and the Madison County Sheriff's Department through joint crime, drug, and violence prevention efforts in the city of Jackson and is supporting National Night Out 2010 locally. And whereas it is essential that all citizens of the city of Jackson be aware of the importance of crime prevention programs and the impact that their participation can have on reducing crime, drugs, and violence in the city of Jackson. And whereas police community partnerships, neighborhood safety, awareness, and cooperation are important themes of the National Night Out program. Now, therefore, I, Jerry Guest, Mayor of the City of Jackson, do hereby proclaim Tuesday, August the 3rd, 2010, as National Night Out, and urge all citizens to join in supporting this worthwhile event. So, I'm sorry, thank you for all you do and all, all your staff in, in helping us with National Night Out. And you step up here and tell everybody what's going on. How's everybody doing today? Uh, tonight is National Night Out. It starts at 6. Uh, we just urge you to get out. I know it's going to be hot tonight, but we just ask that if you can bear the heat. Uh, we have a, approximately about 25, 25, 24 parties. Uh, the citizens have taken the time to put these together because they're the ones responsible as far as putting parties together, and they just want us to come up and show up. So I just urge you to come out. I'm going to leave a list of the block parties over here to come out and look at them. And on the districts, uh, those are the police districts. I've had a couple of calls about that, <coughs> but those are police districts on the, on the list. Thank you. Have a nice day. Six is the invitation for public comment, and let me ask now if there's anyone present who would like to speak in support of or in opposition to any item under new business. If you would make that a show of hands now, uh, then I'll be okay. Let's do this. Let me get to that item, and you stand up and scream or do whatever you <laughs> want to do, and I'll call you right up there. Okay? Anyone else? Okay, one here. Okay, thank you all. Y'all, when we get to that item, if you all would just raise your hand. Uh, item seven is first readings, consideration of ordinance to rename Quaker Oats Drive to Pinnacle Drive, submitted by Pinnacle Foods Group, LLC. Stan. Good morning, Mayor and Council. Good morning. Uh, this particular uh, request comes from Pinnacle Foods. Uh, as you are, may or may not be aware, this uh, street uh, was changed in name to Quaker Oats Drive on Quaker Oats on the uh, industrial building that was located on this drive. Uh, Quaker Oats is no longer uh, in this building. Pinnacle Foods is now. And in the business environment, Pinnacle Foods and Quaker Oats are competitors. So it, it kind of uh, <laughs> is amusing when they send out stuff on their letterhead and it's Pinnacle Foods on Quaker Oats <laughs> Drive. So, so they uh, are wanting to have this name changed. Uh, they have talked with uh, other property owners on this drive and have gotten uh, their 
uh, okay to go go along with the name change, and I think they're doing some negotiation or to help them with some of the expenses that may be involved and in the other property owners. So this has been presented to the Planning Commission, and they are recommending approval of it to you. Okay. Any uh, any questions <coughs> of council? One question. There's there's nobody that fits objection to it then on the street we have not received any uh, objection and, and pinnacle foods has been kind of coordinating that with the other property owners so um, you know if, if unless they speak here today we have not received any opposition move the adoption okay let's have uh, before we before we get to the motion this this is first reading so we'll have a, a public hearing and I'll open the public hearing to see if there's anyone present uh, who would like to speak in support or opposition to the passage of this ordinance See, uh, yes. Come on up. Yeah, just come up and have a seat right here, sir. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. In support, um, I think it's more than just, um, my name is Reginald Davis. I'm the plant manager at the facility. We believe that it's more than just uh, support for our opposition. It's also support for this community. We would like to become a bigger figure. We employ 650 folks uh, here in town. Uh, and, and so uh, in addition to participating on the chamber, we want to participate in other city events. And this is just the start of that participation uh, for our folks and for this community. So it's, it's more than just competing with Quaker. In fact, that's, that's the funny side. The serious side is uh, we want to become a bigger part of this community. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Reza, for that. And, and again, welcome to Jackson. You've been here for about six months? Five months, yes, sir. Five months. So welcome to Jackson. We're glad to have you here. And there's a growing company and continues to, to grow almost every day. Anyone else uh, would like to speak in support or opposition to pass at this ordinance? If not, we'll close the public hearing. And uh, I think we have a motion from Councilman Buchanan to a, adopt second. the ordinance. Is there a second? Second. I have a second. Any discussion from Council? If not, please vote. Okay, item two is consideration request to revise the elevations and square footage for the North Point Lake PRD North Point sections 13 and 14, submitted by Bud Dots. You have the materials pertinent to this request. Just a little bit of um, clarification, uh, of just to explain the process. PRDs, which are planned residential developments, come through the Planning Commission and come to the City Council. Uh, when they're initially approved and when they are approved not only is it a zoning class change but the development plan which is the layout of the streets and in the amenities and things they're going to have but and also the housing types are, are part of that development package are approved in uh, conjunction with the zoning so any change that you make to that package has to go back to the Planning Commission and City Council if it's a major change when uh, Bud and Harry who are the developers uh, in this section wanted to change the square footage of the houses, we felt it was a, a major change. Uh, they were wanting to change, uh, go from what was originally approved, which was uh, on the low side, about 2,700 square feet to, you know, 35, 3,000, 3,500 square feet uh, in, uh, in the homes. They wanted to go to 2,000, and the reason why they wanted to is because they, they felt it was a, uh, more in line with what the market was wanting to do. Uh, are wanted from a product so when they presented that to us we felt like that was too major for for the department to approve administratively we do have that provision to do that if it's a minor change this what we consider to be a major change since it was having to do with the housing types and it was a real component of the uh, of the uh, development plan so that is why it's here um, I believe there have been some negotiations that have been going on um, since we wrote the staff memo to you, uh, in the staff memo we presented you with uh, three options based on information that we received after the Planning Commission met. The Planning Commission was told at the time they approved it that 2,000 square feet matched the rest of uh, the covenants in North Point. We found out that was not the case after the fact. Uh, so we gave you three options based on that because the Planning Commission recommended it, but they recommended it based on that, <coughs> that 2,000 square feet. So the three options were you could either remand it back to the Planning Commission, let them have the corrected information on what the covenants actually said, or you could deny it outright 
or you could do some modifications. In other words, pick a uh, square footage that was some kind of compromise number between what they wanted and, and what might have, you know, shake out in the public hearing or from the groups that, uh, uh, that are property owners and the homeowners association out there. So I believe, and I, and I won't speak for, for them because Bud and Harry are here and, and some of the residents of North Point are here also, so I won't speak for them, but it's my understanding they have been in conversation and they met last night and, and there is some number that they've kind of all agreed to and I'll let them address that at this time. Okay, any questions from council before we open the public hearing? Okay, if not, uh, again, this is an ordinance um, first reading, and uh, we'll have a public hearing. We'll open the public hearing and ask if there's anyone present who would like to speak in support of or in opposition to the passage of this ordinance. Yes, sir. Come on up. You would just have a seat and introduce yourself for the council, if you would, please, sir. My name's Ron Murgy. I do live in uh, North Point subdivision. And uh, we did meet last night, and uh, homeowners association have come up with some proposals that I think Bud and Harry agreed to. Uh, um, the original, based off of their uh, uh, covenants, that had been filed on the 12th of uh, March of 09. They basically were requesting 2,500 square, square feet of uh, housing with uh, 1,700 square feet of heated on the first floor. Uh, the Homeowners Association last night agreed uh, to uh, 2,250 square foot heated uh, uh, with 1,800 square foot on the first floor. And uh, we would like to, uh, we did not see good architectural renderings of the proposed homes that were being proposed, but we would like, we would like to see some of those, but we agree with the uh, square footage change. And uh, we also would like to uh, make sure that there, uh, admit, there hasn't been any other amendments to their, uh, their covenants that was given dated 3-12-09. Okay. Um, thank you, sir. Any, anyone else that would like to speak in uh, <coughs> support or opposition to the passage of this ordinance? Stan, is the, <coughs> the council in position here so to... Here. Yes, go ahead. Yes, please, come on up. Yes, come on up and have a seat if you would, and you all just kind of change out there if you would. Introduce your introduce yourself. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, my name is Van Emery. I'm also a, a resident property owner in North Point subdivision, and um, I've been we've lived there for nine years, and during about half of that time that we've lived there, we have a, a very active homeowners association, and I served as the chairman of the um, architectural review committee that more or less enforces the, the covenants of, of our subdivision, and uh, you know, I, you know, based on the the turnout we had last night, there is a lot of concern about this issue. And I guess the point I want to make is that um, that we have done a very um, proactive effort of trying to police the enforcement of the covenants in our neighborhood is something we take very seriously. Um, I mean, I can cite an, one example. There was a homeowner that was uh, building a house that was, um, had primarily uh, siding on the house and the covenants for the neighborhood calls for brick. And it was, it, actually what happened was they started construction without the proper review and so during the construction process, we got involved. Uh, we pointed that out to the homeowner. They were not aware of it, uh, but they agreed to make the change. They, they actually removed siding that was already installed and, and replaced it with brick so that they could be in compliance with those. So, you know, my point is, um, 
everybody has been very cooperative and there's been a very diligent effort to make sure that those covenants have been strictly followed. Um, I, could, I could go on and cite a lot of other things, but we've, you know, we, we follow up with letters and we try to stay involved. So with that, with that being said, um, I have not seen the covenants that, have, that are proposed for this new development. Um, what, was, what was presented to us last night by the developers is that the covenants are essentially the same. Uh, we, we were shown some photographs that showed um, garage doors on the front elevation of some houses. Uh, but we were told that the restrictions say they have to be on the side, which is what we have, you know, for the rest of the development in there. That is the requirement. You cannot have garage doors on the front. So my, my concern is that I, I would ask that the, the planning department uh, review those, those covenants, make sure that, that those covenants are consistent with what is currently in place for North Point. Uh, that's what we were told last night, but we kind of got some information that was inconsistent. So I just want to make sure that that loop is, is closed um, because the, the, the neighbor, the, the folks in the association are very concerned about keeping that consistent um, architectural look in the neighborhood. <coughs> Okay. okay. Anyone else? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else that would uh, like to speak in support or opposition to the passage of this ordinance? Um, Stan, reiterate your your three options again for the council. All right. Uh, uh, sure also, we uh, would you like me just to yeah just for them to put up some of the elevations that were proposed? Um, again, they're they're because of the compromise that they made. You, you see, this house is. Um, 1768 on the bot on the first floor which means they would have to add additional you know 32 feet to, to meet the, the minimums but uh, this type was one that they submitted uh, which was of course uh, they would have to you know with bumping that floor up they'd have to bump up the other ones too to get up to the 2250 because uh, these were the ones they submitted when they wanted 2000 so so um, this one too is about 1769 on the bottom floor uh, but again would have to bump up the overall square footage by a little bit to to get to the 2250 um, now according to the covenants uh, that they that they that they currently got if they go by you know go by <laughs> those and um, it says that no garage or carport shall be constructed on either lot so as to open to the street upon which the lot is located except without approval from the developer now uh, there was a couple of examples they gave us that did have uh, a garages most of them don't but some of them do so that's something um, you know that will have to be resolved um, either flip it around where you where that doesn't or work something out but that's again that's uh, that's dealing with the covenants um, And, and just for the record, uh, you know, we do not enforce covenants. <coughs> covenants are a private agreement between the property owners and the developer, and we don't enforce those. Now, we recognize them, but, but you know, if, there's, if someone doesn't match those, now, other than whatever becomes part of the development package, the, the house types, the size of the houses, we do enforce that. Um, so... Uh, if there is some <coughs> something uh, awry with those housing types that have the front loading garages, then they we just need to either eliminate them or let Bud and Harry address that because they're here. But the three options for you are remand it back to the planning commission, let them review it again, make sure that you know that they have all the correct information, and, and then give you a recommendation based on the the, the corrected information. Uh, two, deny it completely you know just uh, which basically would be put the development plan that's in place now just leave it intact you wouldn't change so they would still be they would be limited to their 2750 or so that was originally approved to 3500 house types and nothing would change uh, your third option is is some compromise position in the middle where you would approve it but approve it with adjusted or modified square footage and house types um, 
Now, the only the only issue is again um, because they're they've come up with a square footage that's different than the elevations we have, and they've come up. You know, there's been some questions about the garage. We don't have any elevations that match that uh, really. So we would need that, you know, as a part of the package, uh, and it need to be approved. So. Um, can that be can that, can that be handled on second reading if there are any modifications and you all did not receive what you need to receive well, to make Well this up? doesn't require a second because it's already been approved you're just modifying the development plan so that only takes one action of the council so um, you just I mean you decide you could either um, allow us to administratively to, to address that which but but again that would not provide you know, a public hearing for whatever gets submitted, uh, they would just have to uh, trust us to, to approve something that was in line with, with what was approved. Or um, you remand it back and the planning commission reviews all of that and then brings it back to you after it's been reviewed. Or, you know, you table it based on them coming back with all the information to match what the compromise that was reached and then give an opportunity to have all that reviewed um, that's up to you but because it's a, you know it's a part of the zoning package it we do need <coughs> to have the house types in, in there that match what they've approved question yes sir um, regards to the proposals we're talking about the three different choices that this council has one of those choices is to take it back to the Planning Commission and let them review this would that give you there seems to be some question in regards to uh, the covenants mm -hmm. and the property owners that are already existing in that area. W would this allow them that opportunity? Would you re-notice, give a new notification of a, another public meeting of the Planning Commission? I well, mean, the Planning Commission is a, is, a, is a technical review and isn't a public right. hearing. It's a public meeting, but it's not a public hearing. Right. So yeah. the public hearing is right now uh, at the council, or if you took action to table it and brought it back, that would be your a continuation of the public hearing. Um, but with short of that, the, the planning commission process would be they would submit to us the revised information, the housing types that match what the compromise position, the covenants that, that now reflect those changes, and the planning commission would, remove, uh, would review the appropriateness of that. They would make a recommendation it would come back to you if that process was selected. Um, of course, if you deny it, then it stops right here and, and nothing changes. If you modify it, there, we would just need to either say that these housing types are fine as long as they bump the square footage up uh, to match what the covenants say um, and take the ones out that have the front loading garages since that seems to be an issue uh, and it's, it's part of the covenants and, and just approve it like that. And then we will we will ask them just to follow up with some with something that would you know more like what they you know they could give us a few more elevations that would fall into that category. And we, I mean, with, with what we do, if we bump square footage up and, and uh, require them to you know uh, the elevation will be similar to what you've got, except for the square footage bumped up, and they've got to turn those in to you. Can we also require them not to allow any to have the garages on the front? You can do that. I mean, that? it's part of your, it, it's part of the package. I mean, you, the housing type, which the way the garage face is a part of that architectural elevation style. Yes, you could, you could say that's so we not. We say no garages on the front, and then and then re request them to change their covenant to also say that. Well, it says it now. It, it, well, just, says, it just says it just says except with developer them. approval. And so, if you wanted to modify, so if they want to put one in the front, they can approve it. Yeah. So if you wanted to. Uh, eliminate that uh, and just say that you can't have them uh, then then that's that's up to you again the council has the authority to approve what the development plan is going to be okay. Can, is, 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 is mayor's appropriate for that for the developers with no garages on the front uh, well we have the developers here I think I think the council has form an issue which they're dealing with with no recommendation from the planning commission right that, that's why we have a planning commission. It, it, and since we're not dealing with a second reading here, um, we're looking at one month. I, I, we want to facilitate development. I mean, I mean we don't, obviously we don't have enough now, so we'd like to facilitate that. And I guess my question would be, you know, is there still room to 
to compromise, negotiate, and make sure that, that everything is what you all want, both from the developer standpoint and the resident standpoint, and uh, bring this before the Planning Commission and then uh, back to the Council for a recommendation. Will that delay hang anyone, or are we okay with the time frame? Uh, Mr. Dodson, yeah, come on up. Bye. Come on up. Thank you. Uh, do we not have to wait another month anyway? No. No, no you do not because there is no second reading, as I understand it, stand on this on this. So I order. thought it had to so be done no. again in <coughs> September. Not on this one again because it's already been acted on. All this is is, is asking to modify, so it doesn't require a, a second reading. So, give, uh, Stan, if you would give the time frame if we if. if if council elects to send it back to the planning commission and ask them to make a recommendation to council what the time frame would be what the window would be well what we could do um is um because it's being we're kind of having a public hearing today and we're just making sure everything gets aligned like like everybody wants it to we can we can advertise or or uh, uh i'll have to the only thing i need to look at is is um is the planning commission um, in September? I need to look because because the planning commission meets on Wednesday um, tomorrow. And, well, I'm I'm thinking more of next month. If you're asking, it. see, they couldn't get it on this month on okay. this month's agenda because right. it wasn't advertised. In September, um, the planning commission does meet before council, which is rare, you know rare, but it does happen in some months. It meets on September the first. So. Right. So we could do that in September. We would just have to make sure that um, we we kind of ran um, uh, the notice ahead so that you could so the council could deal with it. You know, usually planning commission meets one month and then y'all get, get it right. the next month. But we yeah. could we could do it so that y'all would get it would be both be done in September. So, so but really, the the time frame still works out the same since we don't have to have a second reading on it. Then then if we did that, we can give you all time to. To work through your covenants and, and it wouldn't uh, change the quick. time frame if you thought it was a second reading it's not right. going to change that no. for you for you well this would have this would make you normally you would have to the planning commission would have to meet in september and then you would the council wouldn't get it again till october but we're going to fix it so they can have it by the by um <coughs> tuesday the 7th which is when y'all meet talking you about go. a month yeah you'll meet on okay. the wednesday before our tuesday meeting yes and we'll just make sure that we'll, we'll you won't have the, the agenda. You know, we'll have to hurry and get, kind of get you some, okay. but I'll explain at pre agenda what happened if we don't have all the materials ready to go then, because it'll follow right after that. Um, but yeah. bottom line for us is that we would like Bud and Harry to, one, get the information of the housing types that match so that we can submit to Planning Commission, and also something uh, from a correspondence from the Homeowners Association that just verifies that. This is what they've agreed to, so the planning commission knows that this is what this is, you know, what everybody wants. Uh, Mr. Dodson, that that would be not a problem with you, getting okay. through in September. Can I? My, is it appropriate to make a motion now? Then September first of September. So okay. Yeah. Are we are we are we fairly confident now about the meeting date? Yes. And, okay. We we can accomplish it in September. Okay. Okay. Then. I'd, Okay, is there, a, <clears throat> is there a motion? I'd like answer? to make a motion that we uh, put this back before the Planning Commission uh, in their September 1st meeting, and then they bring that back to us in our September 4th, mm -hmm. I guess, meeting. Second. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Second. Discussion? Council, please vote. And the, and the vote is unanimous. Okay, uh, item eight, second readings, consideration of the ordinance to close and abandon the unnamed alley. Running north off Preston Street, just west of North Royal Street, submitted by the City Housing Department. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion, second. Discussion from Council. Council, please vote. And the vote is unanimous. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Thank you, Stan. Item 9 is new business consideration resolution to approve the actability of Tennessee Code Annotated 67-5-603. D to provide relief to property owners affected by the flood of 2010. I think the council has copies of that uh, of that resolution. Uh, General Assembly approved uh, that through Tennessee Code, the last general 
General Assembly meeting or session. And uh, if there are any questions, we'll try to get them answered for them. I do have a question. Uh, I, I didn't get a chance to read the entire proposal, but I, I did notice that, that um, these have to be FEMA guaranteed or FEMA certified. Is that correct? Um, Does anybody know? Good question. Francis, uh, Ms. Hunley, has, you know, come up, Francis. We may have some other questions. I hate to interrupt you there, but. Get the, the property assessor up here. Thank you for being here, Fran. Uh, no, the county that if, if you're going to adopt it in your county or city, it has to be a, a one that has been declared by FEMA as a disaster, which Madison County. Was. What about the individual properties themselves? Do they have to be certified by FEMA? No. How would that process work? I, I'm, I'm more curious than I am. Well, uh, they have to apply by September the 1st. They have to have been out of their home or business for at least 30 days. We're going to have to ask for some proof of, you know, how long they were out. And yep. that would come through either some of their FEMA papers or maybe their insurance papers. We do see that as maybe being a little bit of a problem. But we don't really think that it's going to be that many properties involved. And it does apply to real improvements and commercial personal property also. It does not apply to land, and it does not alleviate all their tax. Uh, it just, it, it's a proration of the damage that they had to their property. You're talking about like from a month to a month, and, and that's prorated for the year? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, it will uh, be prorated for the actual amount of time that, the, that they were affected. Whereas under normal law, if they had restored or replaced their property by September 1, they would have not received any proration under the, the normal law. Mm -hmm. But That's this right. will allow, even if they did have it restored by September the 1st, for them to have the proration for that period of time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions from, from council? In um, Mayor, yeah, uh, sure. the, the, the reduction in the amount that they owe, that's just going to be for this one year. It'll go back to normal again next year, won't it? Yes, if they have restored their property. Okay. Yes, and this law does expire at the end of this year, too. And we need to reiterate, uh, Ms. Hunley, that we have until the end of this month, the 1st of September, for those affected property owners to come by your office, get their application, complete it, and get that approved by your office, right? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Question, uh, is there gonna be some sort of notification in the paper or has there already been a notification? Uh, well, we're gonna try to put an additional one in there. Okay, big flashing signs or something. <laughs> the county has approved this, right? Through a special call meeting or? Yes, they yes. did. Okay, all right, okay. Okay, any, any other questions from council? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion to approve the resolution. Properly second. Any additional discussion? Council, please vote. <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Hummer. Item two, under new business approval of uh, $7,860.87 change order, Ford Construction Company for Pripkin Road Improvements. That's right. Department made this decision to increase the amount of asphalt on this project for two reasons. One, to keep the vehicles from running off the road as they made that curve to increase it a little bit, and also the amount of time that the road would be closed would be lesser doing it this way. But as a result, unfortunately, it increased the cost of the contract about $7,800. Any uh, any questions of council? That that project is completed. It is. Clearance it is completed. Okay. All right. Motion any to approve. Have a motion to Second. approve. Second. Discussion from council. Please vote. Wait. Excuse me. Can't find the button. Motion. <laughs> now. Item three is consideration of the contract with TLM for lighting and electrical design for the Carl Perkins Civic Center using an energy grant. 
The city received a 100% stimulus grant for this project. Uh, part of this money, about uh, $70,000 has already been used. You have approved the purchase of the LED bulbs and we've got about $390,000 that will be spent on this. They will go in, they will change out the inefficient heating and air system. They will also replace 80% of the lighting in that building for more efficient lighting, and then that way they will have uh, greater energy savings. Just a quick question. What was the total amount of the grant? Uh, I think it was six hundred and seven hundred and something. Seven something. Seven. Close to seven hundred. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from Council? Move to approve. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Just question. Uh, just one question. Uh, this was bid. This is an open bid package. Yes. Yes. And how many um, firms? Three. Respond? I'm sorry. Three. Three. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? We have a motion. Second. Council, please vote. And the motion unanimous. <coughs> Okay, item four uh, is approval and application for a 2010 Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant. Um, we have to have a public hearing, but I think Captain Campbell is here. If you have any uh, any questions about this particular grant, question, Captain. Good morning, Mayor and Council. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, sir. How are, you? How are you doing this morning? Good. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not in the meeting today. I'm just going to ask a couple of questions in regards to how the money is going to be spent. I think part of that was listed in the package, but we like this part of the public record, and, and that way I'll feel better about it. All right. Uh, total number. Of the total number of dollars for this particular grant is. Uh, the total number of hours is ninety-one thousand uh, two hundred and forty-five dollars. I think. And it's a, it's a split, 50-50 split between the city and the county. And so the city will get $45,632.52. And since I can't do anything about the county, the city will spend the money how? <laughs> uh, the proposed proposal essentially is to buy uh, three license plate readers uh, to allow us to import information to essentially catch stolen vehicles, vehicles that we would be looking for for, say, breaking into houses, bolo information type uh, vehicles that people might be driving that we were looking for. Um, I, not that I know anything about the digital cameras that we're going to be doing the, uh, the, the reading itself, but uh, that's what, how much a, a camera? That's Thirty thousand, no, fifteen thousand dollars. <coughs> that, that's about what the whole system costs. The software system software as well. Thing. Yes, sir. Um, and these will be mounted on three vehicles. They will be mounted on three uh, police vehicles. Yes, sir. And how many police vehicles do we have in the? In the, in the uh, patrol vehicles, uh, probably close to eighty something patrol vehicles that are actually in the patrol fleet, not assigned to supervisors. And the reading of this will provide us with some sort of savings, I'm assuming? Or well, it's what, it, what it does is if we were to drive, say, the patrol car through the parking lot of a hotel, mm -hmm. it would pick up uh, stolen vehicles if that information has been entered into the system. If we were looking for someone who broke into your house and we had put descriptors of the car, it would recognize that car to allow us to essentially apprehend those people. How would it recognize the car? This because this technology would, is probably more than you have at home. Not like <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <somebody. laughs> essentially, essentially we, 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 may not we would fully put a description and license plate numbers yeah. in, say, as an example for the car that was. Shape, yeah. size. Say, shape, size, color. license plate number, color. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other uh, any other questions from council? Another question, Mayor. Yes. Sir. There's no local match on this, is there? This is all federal dollars. This is all federal dollars, 100 percent. Yes, sir. And, uh, Mr. Chairman, it yes. is set up where we have to split it with the county. Yes, we have to split <laughs> the month, the, our <laughs> share of the 45,000. That's why I love you. That's, that's what we intend to do with the 45,000. The county gets 45,000. They intend to use it for security at the courthouse. 
And we do the paperwork and all that, right? We do the administrative paperwork and track the grant by agreement. Interesting. No one. Okay. Uh, any other any other questions from council? Uh, we have to have a uh, the, the the guidelines of this grant is that we have a public hearing on it. The I think Captain Campbell has gone over the essentials of the grant. Is there anyone uh, present who would like to speak uh, in any way concerning the? this particular grant which is split between the city and county <laughs> if not i'll close the public hearing and uh ask for a motion to so move second motion second discussion council council please vote all right all passes eight to one thank you captain gamma uh the board appointments um industrial development board the reappointment of andy colbert so moved Motion made. Second. Second. Discussion. Council. Council, please vote. Going too fast. Motion unanimous. Jackson Housing Authority, the reappointment of Earlene Moore. So moved. Second. No, second. Uh, council, please vote. Both passes eight to one. And on the Housing Board of Adjustments and Appeals, the reappointment of Mary Tyler and Tom Grady. So moved. Second. Motion. Second. Council, please vote. Item six is the consideration of budget amendments. Good morning. Good morning. We have two budget amendments to be considered today for our FY11 budget. The first one that we have is a fire FEMA grant. <coughs> you approved this uh, grant back in April, but it did not get budgeted in the FY11 budgets. So all we're doing is asking that the same amount that you approve be budgeted and carried over for the FY11 fiscal year. And of course, it is going to be used for the same things that they said when they brought it to you in April. And this just shows that we are now budgeting it for the thermal imaging cameras, the exhaust systems, and intercam, uh, intercam headsets that they will have. Same match is required as what, what you approved back in April as well on this budget, just to get it into our FY11 budget. Okay. So moved. Have a motion for approval. Second. Second. Questions? Council, please vote. Second amendment that we have today for the FY11 budget is for two capital uh, improvements that we need. One at Omen Arena, $57,000 for a chiller tower replacement that will not be covered by FEMA. This is a need that that facility has had. Second is an improvement at the city garage for an automated entrance gate to make some modifications in the amount of $9,161. Uh, so moved. Okay, we have a motion. Second. It's second. Discussion, council. Council, please vote. The vote is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bell. Final item on the agenda is consideration of invoices over $10,000. So moved. Make a motion. A second. Second. Council, please vote. There being no further business, the meeting is adjourned. Sergeant so Taylor. Okay, I think we're back up and going. Let's uh, let's have the council uh, reconvene until we we uh, take this individual who did raise his hand in public hearing, and I apologize for that, please, sir. Thank you. I'm sorry, I was late or whatever. It's okay. <laughs> um, I'm a property owner. My name is Fate Britt. I'm with Britt Brothers Auto Sales, and uh, I need uh, relief from the red tape of government. I presented the picture there. I'm on Airways, which uh, Stan has informed me is a flood zone. I started building a pole barn and uh, got it almost completed and got a stock order because I didn't have a permit. Went to the permit office to get that, and then I find out it's in the floodplain. You can't build anything. They referred me to FEMA. Uh, FEMA referred me to uh, their website, 
which was 576 pages and several hours to download to find out about a no-rise certification. In addition to that, I have to go to an engineering firm, which will cost five to $10,000, to show that it is a no-rise problem. And if you look at the pictures there that I presented to you, there's no rise whatsoever. There's poles that are in the ground with concrete. And I'm sort of caught, I know the federal government has never, for the most part, had any common sense, but I hope this local government would, and take a look at those pictures and uh, see what relief that I can get from that. What are, what are the options, Stan, in this? I'm, I'm somewhat aware of this issue. Um, the main issue here is, is as a part of the National Flood Insurance Program, and that's the program that allows us to get aid when, when we have disasters like the one we had uh, recently, uh, we adopt, uh, basically FEMA provides model ordinances and we have to adopt those ordinances and, and those the ordinances address and regulate how permits are issued in certain flood zones. This particular property under the new study is in a flood way which is um, the most restrictive and, and of all the flood zones. Um, it, and under that z zone, they will not allow any permit to be issued for construction of anything um, without a no rise. And, and a no rise, as he said, and he's correct, is about a five to ten thousand dollar document that basically an engineer determines that this structure is not going to rise, raise the flood elevation of the water any any negligible amount uh, if it gets built. Now, I agree with him. Uh, it, you know, a pole barn. Common sense would tell you that's not going to do a whole lot because it's not, you know, but the process is still the process. They, it's federal mandated regulations, and we don't have the ability to override them. And the city doesn't have the ability to override them because if, if we permit things in the flood way, when the federal government, FEMA, comes down to do their audit, they can put us out of the flooded, pro flooded program if they see that we're doing things that are in alignment with their regulations. So as much as I understand his situation and, and, and wish I could provide him another alternate process other than having to do the no-rise, based on the regulations, I don't have an alternative um, other than the city to just issue him a permit and then suffer the wrath of FEMA and I, I don't. I don't recommend that because we've been there before, and uh, and and it's not it's not a good place to be. But this is a, a federal regulation as it requires to construction within a floodway. It it is. Um, Mayor Bell, question. That's a question. Uh, yeah, me, uh, Councilman. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask it. Yeah. I, I guess it, isn't this a, uh, an administrative matter and not a not a legislative matter? I mean. Uh, well. Mr. Britt uh, fe felt that he, you know, that maybe this body uh, could, could, you know, adjust just that process because they issue the permits. And I, I explained to him, he's right, the permitting process is a local process, mm -hmm. but the federal regulations <coughs> that govern where those permits can be issued and, and under what circumstances in flood zones is a federal re regulation and a federal uh, authority uh, and, a, and a federal mandated, uh, you know, whether you can issue or not situation. So, so he's right. It, it, you know, th there's two processes at work here, but the federal process trumps the local process in flood zone areas mm -hmm. because we've agreed if the federal government is going to give us aid, we've agreed in exchange for that aid to pass regulations that keep people out of the flood zone so they don't have to pay damages on these properties once they get damaged. And that's, that's the reason for it. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Bell, let me, let me just suggest this. Uh, and the councilman's right, this is <coughs> more or less administrative issue. And, and I think for, for this body, as a legislative body, to act on something that we know is, is illegal <laughs> from, from the, the federal government. Let me, let me try to help you through the council administratively to see if we can get this into some caring nurturing hands in Washington DC and see if somehow you we still may have to have the no rise thing done but hopefully we'll try to try to admit try to orchestrate this to where if you want to continue to do it 
that it can be done at a more reasonable cost. Is that, will, will that suffice for right now? Because I think in, in legislatively we're asking the council to really do something that we know is, is illegal. I know you can't give it the legal advice, but would it not cheaper be cheaper for me to go ahead and complete it and then uh, prove to them, let them prove that it's not a flood problem? Because it's, <laughs> if you've looked at the pictures, it's not. It's, it's just a red no. tape thing, and I've been there 18 years, yeah. and it's not like I've jumped in there and started a new business or anything like that. Well, I think I think we're in a position to where we can't plead ignorance because we've just all been told, yep. you know, that, what, what the law is. Uh, ignorance of the law, sometimes you can get by with that, other times you, you can't. Um, th that's, the only, that's the only way I know that, that, that this council through the administration of the city can can help you is try to orchestrate getting done what you're trying to get done and finish your project at a minimal cost to you as far as some engineering certification uh, that, that FEMA's going to require. And I, we, can, we can help you with that. I can't, promise, I can't promise the final results, but we can certainly do everything we can to, to try to orchestrate that for you. I appreciate it very much. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, We'll go back to the adjournment state. Thank you.